Hey, what's up, guys? MGH here. Welcome back to the Arsenal career mode. And finally, season three is here. Took us a little bit of time to get here, but this is the big season, guys. I mean, I can't hide it. This is the, the season I have to win the Champions League, or at least get to the final, I would say. Otherwise, it's going to be a resounding failure. Now, once again, guys, this video is sponsored by OneFootball. A massive thank you to them. If you haven't downloaded OneFootball on your phone yet, I fully, fully recommend it. You can do so with the link in the description. It's on iOS and Android. It is the best place, the home of football. It's got everything you need. It's got fixtures, results. It's got latest news, tables. You can follow all the leagues you want to. So I follow, of course, Arsenal and England as my main teams. But I also follow all of these leagues that you can see on screen. And then what you can do is during match days, check out all of the fixtures, all of the results, and you can even click on individual games and see who scored, all of the stats like possession. And one of the other best features I absolutely love is looking at transfer news. So you can go ahead and click on the homepage and then go to transfers and you can select your own team or just general news and it will show you all of the players that have been linked with clubs around the world. Download OneFootball onto your phone. It keeps you up to date with the, uh, the football world all in one place, which is... What, well, what more could you want, really? So again, thank you to them for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. You know, we've had two seasons to build an ultimate team. Excuse the pun, this is career mode, of course. The neglected game mode in FIFA. And I think we've built a very, very strong team to the point where, you know, normally at this point in the, the beginning of a season, I'd be thinking about new signings, who I need to replace. But I look at this team, the only, the only issue I see is... Granite Xhaka being a little bit on the slow side, and Gnabry, who I I I feel so bad about this. Basically, Gnabry was a replacement for Bailey, and Bailey was a signing that I made because he was available. It made sense at the time, the formation I was playing. It really suited having him in the team, but I didn't like him, so I replaced him with Gnabry, who at the start I thought was much better. He he scored a lot of goals for me, got a lot of assists, but. I don't like him either. I don't know how else to say it. I, I, I don't know what it is about Gnabry. He pops up and gets the odd goal, but whenever I get the ball with him, I just, I can't put my finger on it. With Dembele and with any other of my wingers that we have, including Williams, Iwobi, even Smith Rowe, well, uh, Nelson, you know, there's, there's a lot of players that could play where Gnabry plays. Whenever I get the ball with them, I don't, uh, I don't know what it is. It drives me mad. I just... I don't think I like him and it's it's really bugging me. So I guess that's one area we could look at changing once again. It would be our third winger in that position. I mean, it's pretty mental. So we've added a few players to the transfer list or the short list, I should say. And uh, we'll be taking a look at those and getting you guys to have a think about it. Leave your comments, tweet me. And by the way, while you're watching this video, I do tweet a lot about career mode in general, and I will be tweeting about signings and things like that. So if you could follow me over on Twitter, at OfficialMGH, there's a link in the description. And while you're down there, why not give it a cheeky like? I'd really appreciate it. And just let me know if there's any signings you think I should be making. So it's basically these two positions that I'm looking at. <clears throat> Excuse me. These two positions here, Gnabry and Xhaka. Everything else, I, I just I don't see the need to improve. Looking at the bench here, it's a very strong bench. And then looking at the reserves, it's a very strong reserve. I mean, there's there's players everywhere that are more than good enough to get into the Arsenal squad. But of course, this season is the Champions League season. I have to do really well in the Champions League. And we do have players that are getting old. Aubameyang is now 31. He's already lost a few stats this season. We've only gone two days in, I think. So it is a little bit worrying to me that Aubameyang, our top scorer, one of our best players is now starting due to decline. He will be 85, 84, 83 in no time. So if anything, we've got Williams. He can come in and replace him easily. Um, but I'm not going to change Aubameyang until he actually starts to drop really quickly. Um, but that is an area we need to think about because if we want to win the Champions League, we're going to have to compete with the likes of Real Madrid, Bayern, PSG, these clubs that have 90 rated stars in their team. We don't have any. So it is something to think about. Um, but I don't want to go overboard and make four changes to the squad and spend all of my 250 million or whatever it is, because that would, of course, ruin the feel of this team. So, 
You know, what you're looking at here is, I think, my best team at the moment with the players I've got. Technically, Xhaka wouldn't be in there because we've got Alwa, we've got Draxler, who's 86 rated, but he pairs well with Torreira. You get that balance. The quick, agile, really good at tackling, the pit bull, Torreira, and then you've got Granit Xhaka, who's a free kick specialist. He's a bit taller, a bit stronger. He's left-footed, which is always nice as well, and he's he is good fun to play with. I, I do enjoy having the ball with Granit Xhaka. So that's what I'm thinking right now. And by the way, Ozil, okay, have a look at this. He's got 59 sprint speed now. How mental is that? 66 acceleration and 59 sprint speed. He's actually slow. He's He's got slow, which is frustrating. But of course, in FIFA, as, as players get older and as they lose their stats, it's typically their physical stats before they start losing their skill attributes. So it's not really a big deal for a midfielder. As long as they can pass the ball really well, and that's, of course, what Ozil is all about, then it's absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is go into the transfer hub here, and I'm going to show you some of the targets I've got. We have Wilfred Ndidi. I've looked at him for a while. You guys know I'm a big fan of him, and he was linked with Arsenal before he moved to Leicester, apparently. And I feel like if we are going to bring in a DM, he could be the one. Now, this one is controversial, for sure, because I know a lot of United fans watching this video will be saying, that's ridiculous. Rashford would never leave United. Well, one, we're in season three, and I think realism goes out the window a little bit. Two, he's already gone to Schalke in the career mode. And three, look at his release clause. So we're looking at 50 to 75 million to sign him, but his release clause is 40.8. It is an absolute bargain. 40 million for Rashford. And I see him as a striker, not a left winger. He would ultimately be up front instead of Aubameyang. But I do have Williams, so I'm not so sure I need him. So I'm definitely going to need your comments on that. We've also got Zaha. We've got two Wilfreds. Um, one spelled differently. We've got Wilfred and Wilfried. <laughs> Bit of a weird one, that. Um, but Zaha, he's got a new uh, game face, by the way. I'm not sure if that's actually it. So... They've done a patch on PC, as you know, I play on PC, but unfortunately, the new faces don't go into your current career mode. You need to restart a career mode, basically, but that looks pretty pretty good to me, and it's got his new hair and the tattoos as well. Um, but Kimpembe is one of the new faces they've included, and I don't have the updated face. It's really frustrating. Um, but the same thing with Zaha here. We're looking at 26 to 38 million to sign him. It's an absolute bargain. He's got a release clause as well, so we could always activate that if the uh, the contract, not the contract negotiations, just the negotiations in general don't go very well. And he can play anywhere up front. I mean, he is so versatile. So those are three players that I've shortlisted already. But of course, you guys need to let me know if there's anyone else, or in particular one of these three, that you would like me to sign. Just leave your comments down below. So now we're going to take a quick look at the board expectations this season. Youth development, we're not going to be bothering it with it, of course, because we're not going to be here for another five seasons. It, I know that sounds crazy, but that's kind of how long you need sometimes to get a youth player all the way up to 90 rated or so. Um, so we're not going to be bothering with that. Brand exposure, we've almost completed the long-term one. I reckon we'll get that done this season. Now, here's the big one. Continental, oh my God. They want me to win the Champions League and it's a high priority. Domestic, they want me to win the league title and win the FA Cup. So the board... It's only an easy task to win the treble. That's what they want me to do. There's no financial objectives at all, again. So, quite literally, guys, we have to win every single competition. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. It ain't going to happen, mate. <laughs> it just isn't going to happen. There's no way I'll win all three. Maybe I can, though. Maybe I need to, to be less doubtful in myself. Um, but it's funny how the most critical objective is our long-term brand exposure one. Why is that? Why? We've got so much money. Why does it matter? That's where I think this system is a bit flawed. Um, but we will try our best, of course, to win all three competitions. But the main objective is the Champions League. If I win that, I don't... <coughs> excuse me. My throat is killing me today. If we if we win the Champions League, I, I honestly couldn't care about the league and the FA Cup. We've already won the league. We did it last season, of course. And the FA Cup, like, that's just an added bonus. Just going to go ahead and sort out training. We're going to have Maitland-Niles and Mukiele in there for now. We're going to do... We've done dribbling, defending. We're going to add passing, I think. Or should we go with shooting? Maybe shooting. 
Yeah, do you know what? Why not? Uh, we will go with this one here. So we'll do his attack positioning, finishing, short pass, and shot power. So it's got a bit of everything there. And uh, Mukiele is in there just because he's not quite 84 yet. I would like to get that done. And look at that. Maitland Niles getting two A's there. Very nice indeed. Good start. So we're going to be kicking off the preseason tournament, which is going to be held in, I think it was Argentina. And we have a pretty easy group, I would say. Ibar, Villarreal, and Benfica. When I say easy, I mean no one crazy difficult. It could still be very close. So let's go ahead and get into our first game here. And there is the usual email we get. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll go back to that. Um, this was the amount of money we won from last season and a bonus. So a total of 291. I thought it was 250 million. So we've got more than I originally thought. Um, but this is funny. Gnabry is not up for sale. I haven't transfer listed anyone in our squad. Yet Juventus have come in with an offer of 58 million. We can easily get more. Um, but do I want to sell Gnabry or do I want to include him in a deal? Or I don't really know what I want to do here. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it for now. We've got a day or two. Let's get this first game out of the way. I'm going to use... Let's use the first team. We're going to risk it. I would still like to win the preseason tournament if possible. Um, but we are going to have some other players coming in like Maitland Niles there. Nelson and Ketia. Oh, great. Mukiele picks up an injury within two minutes. And Elianusi makes it 1-0. Let's finish it. We lost 3-0 to Villarreal at home. Okay, mate. Wait, what? Gwenduzi was in goal. Gwenduzi was in goal. I'm sorry, what? Both my, my goalkeepers are on international duty. Leno and Chesney. What? Why didn't it tell me? Wow, that's that's never happened to me in a career mode before. So in that case, I wouldn't have bothered with a pre-season tournament if I knew that we wouldn't have a goalkeeper, you know? That's madness. And now Mukiele's injured. Let's let's see how bad it is. I can't I can't believe that's just happened. It's only nine days. It's not too bad. Oh well, I got to play. Honestly, Gwen Doozy in goal, that's hilarious. Okay, we we do need to deal with this. It's because I don't I don't really want to sell him. Juventus is interesting in purchasing. We could offer or we could ask for sixty four to ninety four million. Um, well, I don't I don't need the money. I'm actually going to reject it because I might just keep him. It might be that I I don't know didn't get a good feeling about him because I wasn't playing him in the right position. Maybe he's going to be better this season. He is still a great player to have in the squad. Uh, we're going to have, have Enketia added in here. We're going to improve his shooting, of course. Uh, we'll do that one. Incru improves his sprint speed as well, because why not? And we'll do Enketia again. Let's do his passing. And we'll go with the short pass and vision. Why not? I mean, he's 75 rated. We might as well try and get him up a little bit more. Maitland-Niles should be 80 by the end of this preseason tournament. That would be nice. So have we got our players back yet? Nope. We are still going to be... Without a goalkeeper here, let's see how bad it get, how bad this goes. This is going to be really interesting. We've gone with Mendy in goal for this one. Okay. And 6-1. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. Wow, we've lost 6-1. So basically every shot is going in, I guess. Wow, Mendy, terrible goalkeeping, mate. So I think that means we're out, right? Yeah, there, there's no way we can go through. What a waste of a preseason tournament. I, I wouldn't have bothered if I knew that both players were out on international duty. Now, I, I know I could have checked myself, but who, who does that? There should have been a window popping up saying, are you sure you want to play this game? You don't have a goalkeeper. Why wouldn't it? And they're still not back. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Let's see how bad we can lose to Ibar here. It's going to be Smith Rowe. Okay, a bit taller. I wonder what, what selects it. Yes! We won a game with no goalkeeper. They went down to 10 men. That's less exciting. He got two yellow cards in the first 30 minutes. And Aubameyang got two goals. But I, I'm still pretty amazed we got a win. Even down to 10 men, I thought we were going to lose that. Okay, let's let's do the training again. I still I, I can't believe this has happened. We're out of the preseason tournament. I, th I don't 
don't think I've been knocked out of a preseason tournament for a long, long time since they added them into career mode. Um, yeah, so wasn't it wasn't great. We've won ourselves 2.2 million. And it's unfortunate we didn't reach the final. It was very unfortunate. We still have confidence in your abilities to meet this season's expectations. It's just... It's, it's just a load of rubbish, really, isn't it? So I just jumped onto Twitter and asked you guys who follow me, who should I be signing in Season 3? And I had one tweet that caught my eye. And, um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how I feel about it. But someone said, Mbappe, swap him with Aubameyang and give him the number 14. He's the next Thierry Henry. I mean, if there's one way we can improve the squad, it's to sign the best young player in the world right now, Mbappe. I mean, what do you guys think about that? I don't think I'm going to do a career mode that would be any more realistic than it is right now to sign Mbappe. It is one of the most unrealistic signings you can make, but I'm I'm kind of interested nonetheless to take a look. So let's go ahead and type in Mbappe with my keyboard. It's a lot quicker. So he's only 21, but he's going to be the highest rated player in our squad, surely. He's 91. What? 91 rated at the age of 21. He is well on his way to becoming the best player in the world. There's no doubt about it. At that age, he's better than Messi, would you say? He probably is. He's one of the world's best. 99 acceleration, 99 sprint speed. Look at his ball control, dribbling, agility. Even his finishing is 89. He's a winger. Okay, we're going to add him to the shortlist, and I'm going to try this because, like I said, I won't do this in any other career mode. The only time I would get Mbappe or use Mbappe in a career mode is because I'm doing one with PSG. There's no way I would sign it. Maybe at Real Madrid, but I'm not going to do a Real Madrid career mode. So I feel like this is my only chance, really. And it, it definitely, it's interesting to me that we could give him the number 14 shirt. Aubameyang's 31. He's starting to, de to decline. He's going to be worth quite a lot of money. Swap him. PSG will take him, I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to give it a go. Why not? So his value is 102, but that's like it's half his value, really. We're looking at probably 200 million, which, of course, we have. We've got that kind of money. Let's see what happens. So we are going to offer Aubameyang. Player swap. Strikers. Aubameyang is worth 39, so let's call that 45. Maybe they'll pay 45 for him-ish. They're not interested. Oh, man. They'll take a midfielder, goalkeeper, or a centre-back, though. Um, okay, other position. Let's have a look at midfielders. So we could give them Draxler back. Um, doesn't work in a 4-4-2, Draxler. Torreira, no chance. Awa, no chance. Ozil, also 31 years old. Potential there. Not Xhaka. Ramsey, potential there. Ratchet. I mean, I signed him because I needed a DM could potentially go down that route. We've got Maitland, Nars and Gwendouzi as backup. Brooks was another signing just to fill up the squad. I kind of don't need him. But the value they're going to offer is nothing. I think probably giving Meza Ozil a go here. Same situation as Aubameyang. It's, it, it's, it's time, maybe. Let's see what they say. Oh, they're accepting it. Affordable. <laughs> this is just mad. Meza Ozil from Mbappe. Oh my god. If this game could get any more unrealistic, I'd be very surprised. There's just no way in hell this would ever happen. But I want to win the Champions League. And how am I going to do it? By getting Mbappe. Yeah, he's going to get me so many goals. I think I'm going to give this a go. We're going to counter just because it's a really weird number. And my OCD is screaming at me. I think we're going to bring this down to 145. What do we reckon? Do you reckon they'll accept it? If they accept this, I apologise to anyone who thinks it's ridiculous and completely unrealistic. But really, I'm going to go all McGregor on you guys. And I apologise to absolutely no one because it's Mbappe, alright? It is Mbappe, after all. 145 plus Meza Ozil. Mate, this is ridiculous. This is unbelievable. Honestly, going into this episode... No way did I even consider Mbappe. I didn't even think of him. Going on Twitter has changed my perspective completely. It's it, it's mental that he's even available to me. I've got the I've got enough money to do this kind of deal. So this is the interesting part. How much is he going to want wages-wise? Is he going to want less than Meza Urza was on? 
because that, that would be pretty hilarious. I think Mezzet was on 180, something like that. But uh, Killian, you can be the new Thierry Henry. Yeah, how, how do we feel about that? Crucial, of course, is going to be his squad role. That's what he was looking for, of course. He's on 170k. I reckon he'll want probably the same. He might go down. It'll be interesting. Five-year contract, of course. Let's see if he'll accept it. Yep, he will. He wants to settle his future. Why stay at PSG when you can go to the mighty Arsenal? <laughs> I think PSG are more likely to win the Champions League, mate. Uh, doesn't want a release clause. That's fine by me, even though we probably put it at 250, 300 million. But this is the main bit. What's it going to be? Is that it? Really? Mate, ugh, I keep saying mate. I've got to stop saying mate. Mate, you're the, you're the best player in the game right now. <laughs> Maybe not rating wise, but definitely stats wise. There's no doubt about it. And you only want a five grand increase. And you only want 1.5 million signing bonus? I mean, that's crazy. Let's remove the goals bonus and see what happens here. Done. Oh my god, what have I done? What have I done? I've just signed Kylian Mbappe. I'm so mixed right now, emotionally. We've signed the best player in FIFA 19, in, in my opinion. Like, there's no doubt about it. Mbappe, at that age, his potential. Signing him is, is not easy in a career mode, but clearly it is after a season or two with a top team because you earn enough money to do it. Well, we don't need Rashford. We don't need Zaha, that's for sure. We've just signed Mbappe. What? Really? Did that just happen? Meza Ozil's gone though. I'm gonna miss the guy. Meza Ozil, man. But <laughs> look at his stats. It's it's oh, it's ridiculous. So although he plays on the right for PSG and France, I think he goes here. I think he goes on the left side, and in, then he can shift onto that right foot. I think that he he might be lethal there, but of course he can play there. He can play over on the right side with Dembele if he wants to. It's just another French player. Look how many French players we've got. They're just the best players. No wonder they won the the uh, the World Cup and they'll probably win the next two World Cups and the Europa, not Europa, the, um, what do you call it? Why has my mind gone blank? The Euros. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. They'll probably win that as well. So, um, I guess, I guess we sell Aubameyang then. Oh my god. And then bring in Ndidi? Is that what we're going to do? Sell Aubameyang, bring in Ndidi? I mean, I don't even need to sell him. I've got so much money. St I've still got 100 million. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here. Because that was, that was crazy. That is more than enough for the first episode of the season. Signing the best player in the game. There's no doubt about it. But you guys are going to have to let me know what to do next. Aubameyang doesn't really get in this team, does he? I'd argue Lacazette maybe could be dropped for Aubameyang. Um, God, I was just thinking we could put Williams up front with Mbappe. That is the most overpowered combination. Just let me know in the comments. I'm completely mind blown right now. I just cannot believe what's just happened. Uh, just so... Blah, blah. <laughs> let me know what you think I should do. Season 3 is going to be a madness, guys, because we've just signed Kylian Mbappe for Arsenal. We're going for the Champions League, and uh, I think we've just increased our chances quite a lot. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like rating. Make sure you follow me on Twitter as well, guys. Again, it's just at OfficialMGH, and uh, I will see you guys next time.